But just who is this man, Bob? Some call him the Slackmaster, the High Epoch, the Saint of Sales. Others call him Liar, Pimp, Whoremonger, a sleazy con man, foisting his dangerous scam off on gullible suckers. Well, <laughs> dear friend, J.R. Bob Dobbs isn't some outmoded, overused deity from ancient fairy tales, but a living, bleeding deity for today, the divinely appointed messenger of slack, the mystic super salesman upon whose wheeling and dealing skills the fate of the universe hinges. He can sell you anything, and I bought it. And I tell you what, that fly will buy that mound of shit from Bob. Bob's wonderful. I mean, Bob's, you know, it... it. Uh. Uh. Bob is fill in the blank. Bob is fill in the blank. The Bob that can be described is not the true Bob. He's a trickster. Obviously, look at his face, and you could just see, you know, what, what's behind that smile. You know, what's what's in the pipe that he's smoking, and what is what is this game that that is that Bob Dobbs represents. J.R. Bob Dobbs, bred of men in Yeti, he walked with the gods, he wore a silly grin and he smoked a stupid pipe, he fought the conspiracy every day of his life, he whipped the stench of many a man, fathered many children with his mighty glance. The religion in which we all believe Brought us all the slack that everybody needs Born to humble parents somewhere in the Midwest, the child, Bob, experienced a traumatic close encounter with a UFO at the age of three. Soon thereafter, he began to exhibit strange powers of persuasion. By age six, he had made his first million almost by accident. In college, he met and married his first and still his primary wife, Connie, who is now revered by female subgenii as the blessed anti-virgin. With Connie's encouragement, the young Dobbs became a salesman of legendary, almost frightening abilities, known to his peers as the man who could sell anything. He worked his way up to the very top of the conspiracy ladder and might have stayed there. But late one night in 1953, while working on an amateur television of his own design, an event occurred which was to become a milestone on man's mind path to slack. He was suddenly seized up in the spirit by the hand of Jehovah One itself, the cosmic puppeteer of the Old Testament, the wrathful alien space god from some corporate sin galaxy. In this timeless moment, which we call the divine immaculation of the Bob, Dobbs received the first of countless brain-curdling pronouncements which form the sacred prescriptures of the church. He was shown a vision a world where all humanity was equally wealthy, rich beyond imagining, but without working. This experience, combined with his UFO-given sales magic, led him inevitably into the religion field. He quickly discovered the golden rule embodied in his classic saying, they'll pay to know what they really think. The true subgenius can learn to think for himself, but only Bob can show him how. And so, Bob Dobbs founded his church upon a sandy beach of common sense, sense of humor, and dollars and cents. A likely story, you say, but it's simple, really. Bob is lucky, not smart. In fact, by the perverted conspiracy standards of intelligence, he is gifted with incredible stupidity. 
he lives in a perpetual state of contracted consciousness. This enables him to act without thinking, to surf effortlessly on the luck plane, to float down the fabled path of least resistance. In fact, to make a million dollars every time he screws up. Thus, it is not his wisdom, but his divine follies, his holy blunders which we emulate. The miracle is not in what Bob does to you, but in what he allows you to do to yourself. He brings the student to the realization that everything you know is true. Under the conspiracy, you're being ripped off every day, but you can learn to enjoy it. He called his seminars instant instructions for those who follow no master. He journeyed to Tibet, and under ancient holy men, he perfected the arts of landscaping and acute beating. He also began modeling for hundreds of magazine ads, leaving early clues of his presence. These old ads are the only known photos of Dobbs, for he otherwise remains elusive, shunning both the spotlight and the authorities. In 1979, he recruited two randomly selected nobodies, Dr. Philo Drummond and Ivan Stang to begin a public outreach arm and begin spreading his seed word of slack. Well, basically, the church is so omnipervasive and so full that we could not possibly get into the dogma in any, any less than three or four hours. This will outline everything, clear and concise detail, easy to read, keep it near you, and we promise that any answers that you need will be found in this little handy little pamphlet right here. One dollar for salvation. One dollar. 